how church authority, so the bishop and the deacon, how are they ordained? Because we have different methods going around in different churches, but I believe the Bible gives us a clear method on how uh, bishops and deacons are ordained or appointed. And we'll just look here first at Titus 1 verse 5. It says here, well, let's read from verse 4. So this is a letter from Paul, the, the apostle to Titus. It says, To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Saviour. For this cause left I, so just, just note that, that singular there, for this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. So just note the I, the thee, the thou, the thee, these are singular terms. <clears throat> For this cause, I'll just read that again, left I thee in Crete that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. So I believe that the way bishops and deacons should be appointed or ordained um, is like a, 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 how do I say this? It's, it's by the authority of one bishop in order to ordain the next bishop or to put uh, deacons into, into position. Because we see here in verse 5 that when Paul ordained Titus, the, the authority didn't come from a group of people. He just says, for this, this cause left I thee in Crete. And then he says later on, as I had appointed thee. So it wasn't as we had appointed thee, as what happens in some churches, you have like a board of elders or a board of bishops or a board of pastors that you know, have to decide collectively who's going to uh, be appointed as a bishop or a deacon. Paul says, as I had appointed thee, but then he also says to Titus, for this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou should have set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city. So he didn't say get together with all the other bishops in Crete and then decide who's going to be appointed as bishops. He left that charge alone to Titus. Um, let's go to 2 Timothy. I'll just show you this passage here. This is what Paul writes to Timothy. And he says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So we see here to Timothy that Timothy was given the charge, him singular, the same commit thou, Timothy, to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So we see here that ordination comes uh, from top down and it comes from a, the, the authority of a single bishop to ordain the next, next bishop. Now, what does that mean? That means that bishops shouldn't be self-appointed, right? You shouldn't just say, hey, you know what? I'm just, I'm just going to start a church and I'm just going to be um, the, the bishop of that church. I mean, it doesn't work that way um, because God has set in place that bishops lay hands on the next person and, and um, ordain the bishop. That's what I believe anyway. So I'm not saying that, you know, therefore, if somebody goes out and starts a church, that that's not a legitimate church because we've already covered that a church can be legitimate if it doesn't have any elders, if it doesn't have any bishop, because it's just a group of people that have come together to worship Jesus Christ and for the purpose of Jesus Christ. But it's not, all, it's not ideal, and I don't think it's something that we should be seeking. And generally what happens when somebody goes out that's not, all, not ordained, or somebody goes out to, to gather a church, uh, they end up basically you know, being that bishop, and I don't think that's ideal if they have not been ordained, because they may not meet the qualifications. And, and God has certain things that he's put in place as a testing ground before people are ordained um, uh, to, to look after churches and, and pastor churches. But a person might ask, well, what if there is no one willing to ordain me? You know, because let's say you're in an area where, you know, everyone is preaching a false gospel, nobody's using the King James Bible anymore, and you say nobody's willing to ordain me uh, for the positions that I take a stand on. Well, a couple of things we can discuss there is, you know, well, number one, if there's nobody willing to ordain you, just maybe it's just not the right timing yet. You know, I mean, we don't have to rush God's will. We don't have to force our hand. Uh, you know, does it, does it, just because you're not ordained and you're not a, not a bishop of a church, does it, not, does it mean you can't do anything for Jesus? I mean, you can still go soul winning. You can still, you know, do what you need to do as a Christian and, 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 and learn the Bible and do all those things. It just doesn't, it just means that you don't have authority yet in a local church and maybe you just need to submit to the authorities that are there even if they're not perfect but with that being said you know i don't believe that that will ever be the case i i 
I, I, you know, if Jesus says, you know, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, do you really think Jesus would let any country or any, any, any nation or any, the world even, to get to the point where there is nobody faithfully preaching the gospel that would not want to train people up to, to, to ordain them and send them out to start churches and to gather his people? I just don't believe that's the case. And, you know, we know for a fact in Australia that's not the case. Why? Because this church exists. You know, because if somebody believed the things we did and they came here, you know, I'm not strict about all the different standards and all the extra biblical positions and preferences you can have. You know, I just want somebody that is, you know, going to take a stand for the word of God and wants to go to an area and preach the gospel to every creature that is preaching the right gospel with the right Bible. So if somebody wants, if somebody, you know, meets the qualifications and has a desire to hold the office of a bishop, you know, maybe that person may just meet, need to move. You know, they might need to just move their family to get to a church that does have the right positions that they can work with and one day be sent out of. Or, you know, what is more likely the case is that person may just need to grow to the point where they could submit to the authority that has been put under them. Because what's usually the case is it's not that there isn't a church for them to go to. It's just that sometimes people will go to a church and... They, they cause trouble with the positions that they have. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with having different positions. And in this church, you know, I welcome discussion. I welcome, you know, I want people to talk about the Bible. And even if it's contrary positions, because, you know, if you're not going to talk about the Bible here, where are you going to talk, talk, talk about it? Um, where are you going to talk about the Bible? And I'd rather people talk about the Bible here and bounce off people that know the Bible and have the right positions than... You know, like this Anglican lady that turned Muslim that we spoke to yesterday, where she went to her rector of her Anglican church. I didn't even know that the leaders in Anglican churches were called rectors. Did you guys know that? She said she went to her rector, and I was like, what is a rector? <laughs> and she says it's like the pastor of an Anglican church. I was like, oh, okay, I thought they were called pastors as well. So she went to her rector, and then she said she went to, you know, the, 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 this born-again church. So I'm guessing she went to a Pentecostal church or something like that, and she was asking questions about the Trinity and all that sort of stuff. You know, she didn't get the answers, so uh, it's, it's just a, it's a shame. And I wouldn't want somebody who came to our church that had questions, go to a rector or go to you know, a born-again church, rather than just coming here to people that actually uh, believe the Bible and are saved and, and can give them the right answers. But, you know, there's a difference between, you know, discussing the Bible and, and causing trouble. And, and I think we all know the difference. I mean, there's a gray line between where it starts and stops because, you know, you can't often control the other person's response. But, you know, we, can, we can't control how another person will respond, but we can control how we respond. We know whether we're getting proud. We know whether we're getting angry. We know whether, you know, we're trying to, you know, uh, sly around and, and, and cause division. So obviously we should not be doing that as much as possible. You know, division and, and contention in the church is, is going to be inevitable. Um, and and it's, it's not a, necessarily a bad thing. You know, contention is not necessarily bad in and of itself. I think it's how we respond to it. Because if we, as a church, know, hey, you know what? People are going to have differing opinions. I shouldn't get offended when somebody brings something to me. Then we can keep that unity. We can keep that discussion open. And we can keep talking. We don't have to get upset at one another. And we can sharpen each other, as the Bible says. So they're appointed top down. And, and the authority comes from an, an existing bishop. So it's not self-appointed, but also it's not appointed bottom-up. So this whole idea of churches voting to put bishops in power is totally against the Bible. Because even if somebody said, well, you needed to have multiple elders or multiple bishops in order to ordain the next bishop, that's still coming from top down. That's not the, the sheep choosing the shepherd.